What's up everyone? It's Zach from Box Alarm Trading and today is Rookie Research Volume 2. Today we're going to be talking about Michael Morales. If he's dropped in the 2023 class, is he somebody you should get? Let's find out. As usual, there's time codes in the description. Be sure to check those out if you want to skip ahead to anything in particular. We also have our social links so you can follow us on IG or Twitter and uh, keep up with our growing collection. If you enjoy this rookie research series, please give this video a like and a comment below. Uh, they're fun to make, but I don't know if you guys really enjoy them or not. Is it something that people want to hear about? I don't know. I think it's interesting, but uh, please let me know your thoughts on that and subscribe for future content just like this. Okay, so before we go any further with this video, Michael Morales already has a Panini Instant rookie card out. Um, I'll leave a tag up here somewhere. You can check out my Panini Instant video that I made. If you wanna collect them now and get them up before he kinda of bubbles up and continues to get any more expensive, you can get on eBay and try and find one of those. Okay, so big macro view, who is Michael Morales? He's a 23-year-old, 14-0 prospect who fights in the welterweight class. He is six foot three. He is from Nicaragua, and right now he fights out of Tijuana, Mexico. So again, I want to reiterate: what are some of our main metrics that uh, I want to continue to look at whenever I'm scouting these rookies? How old are they? How long do they have to mature? How long do they have to keep adding tools to their game? What is their path to a title in the division? What kind of popularity do they have around their name? Are they going to be a people's champ? Do they have a lot of social media followers? You know, could they create some buzz within their country and within their community? And most importantly, do they have the skills? So we're gonna look at some game film, look at some tape, and see if he has the skills to continue to rise through the ranks and maybe get a title shot one day. All right, so firstly, he's 23 years old. So we got a big check mark right there. I mean, he has tons of time to develop. He's been in the game, like I said, for a while. He's 14 and 0, already has two UFC wins, and he's only 23 years old. So, I mean, this guy is super young. Hopefully his management in the UFC will kind of take him slow, uh, take his progression slow and slowly, you know, kind of give him better and better people, give him a couple unranked guys early on, especially in that 170 weight class and, you know, kind of let him develop throughout time. Hopefully they don't rush him. We don't get like a Sage Northcutt type, type deal where super young guy just kind of gets demolished before his career even takes off. He also is 6'3", so he has the size and he has the frame to do well within this division. Now that's not a make it or break it with some of these guys, but uh, it is a for me it is a big metric. If you look throughout the weight classes, most of the people that are, are dominant, you know, are bigger, they are longer, they have longer reach for the weight class. Every now and then you'll get a smaller guy that is dominant, but for the most part, uh, throughout every division, you know, Figgy, big for the weight class. You know, Holloway was big for the weight class. Uh, Leon Edwards, big frame for the weight class. The, the list goes on and on. Pretty much a lot of these guys, uh, if they have the frame, if they have the size, it helps, uh, obviously, to be better in the division. Okay, so speaking of divisions, what does Morales' path look like in the 170 pound division? And my answer to that is not good. I mean, me personally, that's my favorite weight class in the UFC. You've got uh, Hamza, you've got Leon Edwards, you've got Shavkat, you've got, you know, pound for pound Usman or X pound for pound Usman, um, you know, Gilbert Burns, you've got Sean Brady, Bilal Muhammad. I mean, really the, you know, top 12 guys are just very good. You know, hands of steel, Jeff Neal, like tons of killers in this division. And I really don't see Morales getting too high in the ranks. Uh, you know, maybe a couple years from now, he'll be able to develop his game and, and, you know, be in there with some of those guys. But I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the top five within, you know, three years. Maybe after three years, three, four years, he's developed enough. And then maybe he can crack that that top five-ish. But I don't see him getting anywhere near a title anytime soon. All right. So is he going to be a people's champ? Let's talk about popularity. We'll talk a little bit about the gym he's from. So he's got 134,000 Instagram followers. He is from uh, Ecuador. He is, you know, fighting out of Tijuana. So he does have a lot of, you know, South American fans that are going to get behind him. You know, there's a almost a guy that's about to be champ, Cheeto Vera. He's from Ecuador as well. I know he's going to kind of, you know, get with his boy and I'm sure they'll do some stuff together with social media since they're from the same area. Kind of the only two guys that are bubbling up that are from that area that are really successful fighters. So I'm, I know they're going to do some stuff together. So I think Vera will give him a little bit of a rub as far as popularity goes. Um, we all know that the Mexican fans love their fighters. 
Uh, he's fighting. Uh, his gym is in Tijuana. So you, we know Brandon Moreno was actually at the exact same gym, that Entram gym. So I'm sure that Moreno, you know, and, and the other uh, Mexican fans and the other Mexican fighters will probably rally around him as well. So I do think he's going to continue to gain in popularity. And people are probably going to want his cards. And like I said, he does fight out of the Entram gym. You know, they produced the champion and Brandon Moreno. He just recently left that gym. But uh, we know that Morales is in good hands. He's got good coaches if they can produce other championship caliber fighters. Uh, there's also another pretty good prospect, Yasmin Haraguay. Haraguay? Jauregui. <laughs> That's how you say it. That uh, comes in uh, fighting out of that gym. And she's also got a lot of skills. She's also another undefeated young prospect. So uh, I think he will continue to develop and continue to add weapons to his game. All right, so we've talked a little bit about his age. Uh, a little bit about his path to a title in the division that he's in. Uh, we've talked a little bit about his popularity. You know, are the people going to like him? Will people want to buy his cards? And how he can continue to get a little bit more popular. And now we'll take a look at some of his film and uh, kind of see what type of skills he's working with and see if you think that his game will translate as he continues to get better and continues to grow as a fighter. So this first fight we're going to look at is against Veritenikov. Um, this is on the Contender Series, so this is technically not a official like UFC fight. This is a fight to get into the UFC and to get a contract. Um, a little bit about, about his opponent, Veritenikov. He trains at King's MMA um, under Rafael Cordero. So there's guys like Marvin Vittori, Giga Chikadze, uh, Benil Dariush. These are all guys that he's training around. So we're going to kind of get to see what Morales looks like against a pretty good opponent with good trainers and good training partners. Okay, so we got Morales. He has really powerful hands. He likes to throw that right hand. Uh, one thing that I didn't like about watching his film is he tends to exit straight back and he does kind of leave his chin up. So that's not really something that I like about his game. He does throw some good kind of unorthodox strikes. He did this a couple times in this fight. He uses the cage, bounces off, throws that right hand. He also does a switch right hand, with his really, which is really sneaky and a good way to cover distance. You kind of pop that jab out, you switch to southpaw, and then throw that right hand. Uh, he, he is very strong. His parents are uh, judokas, so he has a long history of um, grappling and a long history of you know practicing in the clinch he does a good job here um really just dominating veritenikov against the cage which is super important if you're going to get to the next level you have to be able to control people on the cage and you have to be able to uh, get up off the cage and also to you know switch position and not let people control you it's a great way to win rounds you know you can you can kind of stall i guess you could call it but you know, really, you know, it's just a good strategy. We see Usman do that. A lot of the top guys do this. All right, so here we're going to see what I'm talking about, where he exits straight back. He kind of leaves his chin up, and he really is susceptible to this straight right hand. So we'll watch that again. Flicks the jab, exits straight back, chins up, bink, gets caught with the right hand. Use the body lock, just throws him down, uses his athleticism. He's a good grappler. Okay, so this next fight is Trevin Giles versus Michael Morales. Trevin Giles has wins over Ryan Spann, so he's a pretty legit, legit dude. He has wins over Brendan Allen as well. This was earlier in both of their careers, but um, still decent wins. Um, he recently lost to Drickus Duplessis and then uh, Michael Morales TKO'd him, but um, pretty decent guy, so we'll see what he can do against him. So they start standing up. Um, again, Morales kind of goes st online straight back with his chin in the air. Boom! Giles uh, catches him with a big right hand. So he flicks that jab out just as a distraction, comes with a straight right, puts him on his butt. Um, but Morales did respond pretty good. He got flashed, but he, he got up quickly, was able to grapple off the cage defensively. Now he did get taken down right here, and man, this was such an unlucky sequence for Morales. He landed basically with his arm around his mouth, around the other side of his neck in an arm triangle, which is like the worst position you could possibly get. Giles makes a mistake here, and um, he kind of lifts his hips up for a second. He almost taps, lifts his hips up, and then Morales is able to get a little bit of oxygen and then explode out. Like, watch here. Uh, Giles' hips are real low, real low. He's sinking into the choke. Morales is almost about to tap. He gives him space. He gets a quick breath, and then, boom, is able to use his athleticism and explode up and out of danger. Oh, beautiful technique here. He does that uh, Superman punch. Doesn't get it, but 
he realizes that he's still within distance to turn that into a low leg kick. Beautiful combination there. But uh, what Morales does have, man, is he has power in his hands. Like when he connects on every fight, when he connects, people feel it. He hit Giles with a, a good hook coming in. He's wobbly. He also has the killer instinct, which is super important. When someone is hurt, this guy goes after him, man. He goes after him. So he has the killer instinct as well, which is super important when you have people almost finished. His most recent fight was against Adam Fugit. Fujit, um, don't know his name. I wasn't able to watch this fight live and I couldn't find it on YouTube as well. So kind of, you know, I don't, I don't like that I can't find it, but uh, Morales did end up finishing him in the third round. Uh, what we do have are the judges' scorecards. Two of the judges had it tied up going into the third round. And from what I could read online, it was a pretty good scrap. Um, so again, Morales kind of gets tested with a tough guy and he's able to overcome adversity and get another win. Again, it was a TKO, kind of similar to the, the Giles sequence where it was kind of a, you know, a loose exchange. Both guys are kind of wild. And, but when Morales lands, dude, he has hands of stone. So if he lands, he's gonna be putting people to sleep. Should you pick him up in 2023 if he's dropped? Uh, I say yes. Now he's definitely not my favorite rookie out of the 2023 class, but, and this is a, a big but here, he is 14 and 0 and he's super young. So we kind of have to take into account how other people are going to value him, right? And um, I always want to get people when they're cheap and what I think they're worth. I don't know if he is going to be a value play just because of his 14 and 0, you know, he's still undefeated, kind of like uh, Ian Gary type guy where, I mean, he's they, they've had a couple of fights, they've proven themselves a little bit, but not anywhere near like the upper echelon uh, of a ranked guy or even, you know, a veteran savvy guy. So it's gonna be, a, I think, a little tough to get him for cheap. That's why I'm not super huge on him, but we'll see if, if, he, if and when he does get dropped. If there's some value there, I definitely load up on him a little bit. All right, we did it. Rookie Research Volume 2. Um, if y'all are enjoying this series, please leave a comment below and let me know what y'all think if you want me to keep doing these. I think it's really fun watching tape, kind of analyzing, kind of getting into the X's and O's because I, uh, I love to practice martial arts and I love to you know try and improve. So it's super fun to see these guys that are just amazing at everything, at every aspect of martial arts and see how they move and see what kind of you know game plan they implement against their opponents. Um, so if you're enjoying these videos, please go ahead and give me a like. Uh, give me a comment if you like this series and what other videos you'd like to do. Um, please subscribe for future content like this. We've got three blasters that are coming down the pipe. Uh, we've got some NBA Prism as well that are coming. Uh, stay tuned for future videos. And thanks for watching, everybody. See y'all next week.